Hi, my name is Meghna Paul and I'm an 8th grader at Asalas Academy. For my science fair project, I've chosen the topic, Effects of Preservatives on the Longevity of Flowers. My research question is, which solution keeps cut flowers freshest the longest? Now, I've chosen four substances for my solution. Water, sugar, lime juice, and bleach powder. Now, let me tell you why I chose these substances. Water, which is a 7 on the pH scale, provides the cut flowers with strength and fills the new growing cells up. It also ensures that the flowers are receiving the necessary nutrients and prevents wilting. Sugar, which is a carbohydrate, feeds the flowers. And as a result, they last longer and the sugar also keeps them healthy. Bleach, which is a base, kills any bacteria forming on the cut flowers which as a result ensures longevity. And lime juice or even vinegar, which are citric acids, lower the pH level of water, allowing it to travel faster, which contributes to wilting reduction. My null hypothesis states that there is no difference in the mean preservation period of flowers across different preservatives. And my alternate hypothesis states that there is at least one difference in preservation period of flowers across different preservatives. Now, if this part is true, my second part of the hypothesis comes into the picture. If we keep the flowers in the water, sugar, bleach, powder, and lime juice solution, then they're going to thrive the longest. For my experiment, I've chosen four different kinds of flowers. Pink roses, white carnations, Barberton daisies, and Peruvian lilies. My observation span was of one week, which is seven days, and my external conditions included a cool, dry space with an ample amount of sunlight. I had a total of five setups, one controlled setup and four experimental setups. My controlled setup didn't involve any substance or solution, and my first experimental setup, which is test setup one, included a water and sugar solution. My second setup included a water, sugar, and bleach powder solution. My third setup included a water, sugar, and lime juice solution. And my fourth setup included a water, sugar, bleach powder, and lime juice solution. Now let us take a look at the experiment. Now let's look at the analysis of our findings. This table shows the days on which the flowers stay fresh and when they started to wilt. F stands for fresh and W stands for wilted. So for example, the pink roses, on the first day, they stayed fresh in the control setup and they started to wilt on the fourth day. Likewise, goes same for the other flowers and the setup. This table shows the difference between the days, the day the flowers started to wilt and the day they, it was fresh. So for example, in the controlled setup of the pink roses, the, flower, the rose started to wilt on the fourth day. So four minus, it was fresh on the first day. So four minus one equals three. So it basically stayed fresh for three days. And here we have the group means. So it's basically the mean of all these values. Here n equals the total number of observations. The observations are basically the data points. So we have five groups. And for each group, we have four data points. So 5 times 4 equals 20. For my grand mean preservation, I've multiplied each of these values by 4, and then I've added them and divided them by my total number of observations. So my grand mean preservation value is 3.7. My control mean preservation is, as mentioned here, 2. My test set of 1 mean preservation is 3.67. Test set of 2 mean preservation is 4.25. Test set of 3 mean preservation is 3.67, and test set of 4 mean preservation is 5.25. Now, this whole part 
shows the variance between the groups. This table shows the grand mean, uh, this column shows the grand mean preservation period, which is 3.7, as mentioned here, I guess, yes, here. And each of these show my group mean preservation. The values are here. And grand mean preservation is X bar. And group mean preservation is X bar J. So this is the difference between them. X bar J minus X bar. I've mentioned the values here. And then we're squaring each of these values in this column. So that is X bar J minus X bar whole square. Here I've mentioned what each of these stands for, where K is the number of groups, which is 5, X bar is the grand mean, and X bar J is the group mean. In this table, this column shows the number of observation in J's group, which is NJ. And this column shows multiplies NJ by X bar J minus X bar whole square, which is basically the difference between the group mean and the grand mean preservation. And we're squaring that difference and then multiplying it by the number of Value, uh, number of data points in J's group. So we have four. In For all of them, we have four data points in, number of data points in J's group. So we have multiplied those values and we have added, we've multiplied these values and by four and then we've added them. So the sum comes up to 22.36. Now for variance between groups, the degree of freedom equals k, which is the number of groups, which is 5, minus 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Therefore, the mean of squares between the groups will equal 22.36 divided by 4, which is the degrees of freedom, which equals 5.59. Now we have to come to the part where we discuss variance within groups. So here I've mentioned what each of these variables mean. Xij equals each data point in a group, and x bar j equals the group mean. So we've done this for each setup. I've explicitly showed the process for the control group and for the T1 group. For the control group, x bar j, which is the group mean, is 2 for all of the points. And xij shows each data point in the group. So in the control group, it shows all the data points of the control group, which I think I've mentioned somewhere here. Yes. Over here, I think. Yeah. And then, similarly, like we did it for this table, we subtract x bar j from xij, and then we square the difference. And then we have to add these values up. We have to add these squares. So here the squares are 1, 0, 1, 0, and we've added them, so the sum is 2. Same thing for all the other groups. I've showed the process for the T1 group, and for the others, I've just mentioned the sum values. So for the T1 group, the sum is 1.12. For the T2 group, the sum is 2.74. For T3, it's 1.12, and for T4, it's 2.74 again. So now we take the total summation of all these squares within the groups, obviously 2.2 .2 plus 1.12 plus 2.74 plus 1.12 plus 2.74. So the summation is 9.8. And the degrees of freedom within the groups will be n minus k, where n, I think I've mentioned n, yeah, n is the total number of observations, which is basically the total number of data points. We have 20 data points here. So 20 minus k, which is the total number of groups. So 20 minus 5 is 15. Therefore, the mean of the squares within the groups will be 9.8 divided by 15, which is 0 0.653. Now here, we have f stacked, 
which equals mean of the squares between groups divided by mean of the squares within the groups. So my value for the mean of the square, squ squares between groups was 5.59, which I've shown in those two charts, I believe, divided by the mean of the squares within the groups, which equals 0 0.653. So my value is 8.56. And there's a standard F distribution table. So from there, we have found F critical of 4 and 15 equals 3.056. You can refer the table from Google. Okay, now because F stat, which is 8.56, is greater than F critical, which is 3.056, we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate hypothesis. That is, at least one of the mean preservation periods is significantly different. Now, we commence to find the significant group mean or means. So, we did a non-parametric post -hoc, te hoc test because we only have four data points per group. We don't have like a really large sample size, so that's why we did a non-parametric parametric post hoc test. The test name is post hoc underscore conover from the scikit underscore post hoc package written in Python. The test is conducted with a family wise error rate, which is FWER of 0 0.05. Now this is basically a table inc including the p-values of these groups. So you can check all these p-values out. And from this table, we can infer that the T2 group mean is statistically significant compared to the control group mean, which basically means that the adjusted p-value equals 0 0.0112, which is smaller than or equal to 0 0.05. Now, this value, in order for in order for us to reject the null hypothesis, this value has to be smaller than or equal to 0 0.05, which is the family-wise error rate. Now, similarly, for the T4 group, the T4 group mean is statistically st statistically significant compared to the control group mean, which means that the adjusted p-value, which is 0 0.0006 is smaller than or equal to 0 0.05. So now we can come to our conclusion. From the above results, we can conclude that the solution used in T4 is the best. In T4, we used water, sugar, bleach powder, and lime juice for preserving the flowers used in the experiment. There is only 0 0.5. 006 chance that there will be no difference in the preservation period of the flowers without the usage of any preserving agent given that the null, null hypothesis is rejected. Thank you.